So good morning. Um, I'm Mrs. PH and I'm excited because this is the very first episode of Science News. So I always tell the fifth and sixth grade scientists at Science Leadership Academy, who I teach, that science is everywhere. And also that science through the scientific method or just science in general helps solve problems. And so I'm excited to share today's news story that I saw in the Philadelphia newspaper, the Philadelphia Inquirer. Um, and it mentions, it kind of brings together um, several things that I've been involved with personally, but also a couple of things that we've learned in um, Pathfinder Science at SLAMS. So one is we learned about cells and then how it's connected to cancer. And our project from that was, um, and this was our second project, um, the students created cancer awareness, um, cancer awareness campaigns through their knowledge of um, cells and living and non-living things and everything we learned through that. Um, and the other thing, right before COVID-19 and the schools closing, we were wrapping up our reproduction unit and we learned about um, viruses reproducing too. So it was very relevant to what's happening. So this article combines both of those things. And it also is exciting to me because in the article is Dr. Carl June. And even though I don't know him personally, I do know the Whitehead family personally. Um, anyone that knows me, including my students, know that every, I try to re run the Philadelphia Half Marathon to raise money for the Emily Whitehead Foundation. Um, I'm honored to know the Whiteheads, and Emily was the first one in the world that received the revolutionary CAR T cell therapy treatment that Dr. Carl June and his um, team at Penn were able to develop. So that's why I was filled with excitement when I saw this article this morning. So what I'm gonna do is I'm sharing my screen and I'm just gonna read along with you um, the article. Now it is a little long, but it, and I'll be pausing in some parts just around what um, is being said. And I just apologize in advance. Um, you you know, um, he's actually been a star in a couple of the videos. Um, my son Aiden's just playing in the background, so you might hear him um, while we're reading this. So apologies in advance for that. So tackling coronavirus is the next challenge for Penn Cancer Pioneer by Marie McCullough. The coronavirus is giving a new direction to Carl June's life. So this is Carl June after menacing it. June is the Penn Medicine researcher whose lab pioneered T-cell immune therapy, a revolutionary, albeit fabulously expensive, one-time treatment that has cured blood cancer patients who are terminally ill. So Emily Whitehead um, is one of those patients and she was the first one. So that's why I was filled with excitement when I saw this. It turns out that the worst coronavirus infections often trigger an immune system overreaction that is also a side effect of the T-cell therapy now made by Novartis and branded Chimera. That's why June is joining the Pell Mel Global Race to find medicines for COVID-19 and publishing papers about likely candidates. At Exterma, a rheumatoid arthritis drug that June's team used as an antidote to Chimera, immune overstimulation, is now in clinical trials for severe COVID-19. And June has proposed a trial of cyclosporine, an immune suppressant long used to prevent organ rejection in transplant patients. Lanky and fit at 66, June is also newly recovered from the disease that has killed more than 140,000 people worldwide. While he didn't need to be admitted to the hospital of the University of Pennsylvania, he felt as if he were coughing up a lung. 
I was sick for about three weeks, said June, who before the pandemic regularly biked to work from his Marion Station home. I don't know where I got infected, but I do a lot of traveling. My case was mild to moderate. He's now trying to donate his plasma, he added during an interview last week. Penn is among many centers um, testing the theory that coronavirus fighting antibodies in recovered patients' blood plasma may help critically ill patients. Coronavirus has a way to outwit the immune system, June said. That's why the illness drags on. Redundant efforts. Besides plasma, the mainstream media have focused on two other potential treatments. Hydroxychloroquine, <laughs> an anti-malaria drug that President Donald Trump has touted, and remdesivir, the, the experimental antiviral made by Gillette that was not effective against the Ebola virus. But doctors around the world, especially in China, where the coronavirus emerged, are desperately trying a long list of other drugs, as well as alternative therapies. More than 500 clinical trials and counting are underway. There are so many that websites have been created to keep track and to help recruit the millions of participants needed for the studies. The fingers crossed list includes antivirals that usually treat hepatitis C and the AIDS virus, anti-inflammatory drugs used for a lung scarring disease, steroids, and other immune suppressants, cancer drugs that inhibit blood vessel formation, cancer drugs that cut a break on the immune response, stem cells, and experimental drugs in the pipeline for various conditions. The urgency only heightens flaws in the drug development process. There are many redundant trials not prior prioritized based on science, but on companies' portfolios, June said. They use patients up. It doesn't allocate basic resources wisely. For example, he said there are at least, at least 16 trials of drugs like Gentex Exterma, also called Tocil Zumba. These drugs block one of the powerful inflammation-causing cytokines that sent the immune system into overdrive. So right here, this beautiful young lady is Emily. I love this picture. And again, honored to know the whiteheads. Um, who are awesome. And so nearly eight years ago, a cytokine storm almost killed seven-year-old Emily Whitehead, the first child to receive the experimental T-cell therapy at Children's Hospital of Philadelphia. She was days from dying of leukemia, but the therapy made by genetically engineering her T-cells to attack her cancer sent her into a tailspin of organ failure. June's team saved her with a medical Hail Mary, Exterma, which is now approved to treat the cytokine storm. Emily's 15th birthday is next month. Yay, so exciting and such good news. Exterma has relieved severe COVID-19 in a small study in China and anecdotally in at least one dramatic case in the United States. June said he's confident Exterma will prove effective, but they can't afford it in India. They need something cheap. That's the advantage of cyclosporin. Carl was particularly interested because it's off patient, it's affordable. There's a good supply and it could be very helpful in the developing world, said Emma Meager, Penn's Medicine's Chief Clinical Research Officer. Penn's Ethics Review Board is now considering June's proposal for a small trial to see if giving cyclosporin to patients soon after hospitalization can prevent the immune overreaction. But the risk-benefit trade-off is dicey, Meager explained. The release of inflammatory proteins in COVID-19 is slower and less severe than the T-cell therapy. So reducing the body's natural defenses could backfire, maybe upping the chances of pneumonia. And while lab studies suggest cyclosporin could reduce the virus's ability to reproduce, 
it might actually do the opposite. And I just want to point out that sentence that cyclosporin could reduce the virus's ability to reproduce. So to the fifth and sixth grade scientists at um, Science Leadership Academy Middle School, you remember that there's different shapes, right? Like the virus shape. And then we talked about what can stop it from reproducing, which is when it be, when it really takes a toll. Um, so this may, and that's why we have science to figure it out, it might do the opposite. For June, the coronavirus brings him full circle back to infectious disease. The U.S. Naval Academy grad, thank you, um, spent the early part of his career researching the AIDS virus alongside government scientists, including Anthony Foshi and Deborah Burks. And Anthony, Dr. Foshi, is the one who's been at the forefront, um, and you see him on the, in all the press conferences around coronavirus, who are now leading the federal public health response to the pandemic. June is sanguine that the coronavirus crisis, like the AIDS crisis, will force changes for the better. And it, the article ends with a quote from Dr. June, I think we're going to come out of this with lessons that help us change, he said. That's the small silver lining. Um, so when I read this, I was just filled with a lot of hope. Um, I felt a little helpless during this pandemic. Um, because I know I'm helping by staying home um, and virtually teaching my students, but it's just, what else can I do? But just seeing this and knowing that this brilliant scientist who's also in Philadelphia is on the team that's helping find a cure for this, um, disease, this virus, coronavirus, it just fills me with a lot of hope. And it also reiterates the point that science can solve problems and that science is everywhere and science rocks. And I'm just so grateful to be able to teach science. Um, that's it for today's segment of Science News. It's great seeing everyone and we'll see you next time. Thank you for joining us today.